Tomorrow is a big day for disgraced former Congressman Chris Collins when he'll find out his sentence after pleading guilty to two charges in an insider trading case and figuring out whether or not he'll get any time in prison. It's all going to be in the hands of a judge. So to break down his crimes for us and his possible punishment tomorrow, let's head right out live now to New York City where sentencing is scheduled for less than 24 hours from now. And that's where we find two on your sides. Michael Wooten with the story. Hey, Michael. Yes, Scott and Mary Alice, the sentencing tomorrow inside the courthouse behind me here in Lower Manhattan will cap off the conclusion of the career for Chris Collins, who was one of the most powerful politicians in Western New York in recent memory. He is already a convicted felon. The big question, will his punishment include time behind bars? Time. I'm innocent. I'll be exonerated. After time. I'm not negotiating any plea deal. After time. I am innocent of the meritless charges. Disgraced former Congressman Chris Collins lied to you, but tomorrow he'll come clean before a federal judge here in Manhattan. The court will give him an opportunity to speak, and I'm sure he will. What do you think he'll say? I think he's going to say it came from the heart not from the head. Concluding an insider trading case that dates back more than two and a half years, Collins now admits to illegally tipping off his son Cameron from the lawn of the White House on June 22, 2017. The next day, Cameron started selling his shares of the company's stock, saving more than half a million dollars. Ten months later, FBI agents questioned Collins, who repeatedly lied. But with overwhelming evidence, a grand jury indicted him, and Collins was arrested in New York City on August 8, 2018. He arrived back in Buffalo that night and told reporters the charges were, quote, meritless. Under indictment, he still ran for re-election and in November of 2018, narrowly won. He maintained his innocence all along, but then out of nowhere, this resignation letter, effective September 30th of last year, Collins was back in New York City the next day to plead guilty to conspiracy to commit securities fraud and making false statements to the FBI. Defense attorney Tommy Iwanu has been through about a thousand federal sentencings in his legal career. So what can we expect with this one? It's going to be a very, very difficult sentence for the judge. Here are some factors. The non-binding sentencing guidelines for Collins crimes suggest between 46 and 57 months in prison. Prosecutors told the judge he deserves near the top end of those guidelines, but the court its own probation department recommended just a year and a day behind bars, and Collins' defense team asked for no incarceration. The judge, though, doesn't have to follow any of that. The judge has a lot of power in a case like this, and judge, a lot of leeway. Yes, the judge has all the power right then and there. Iwanu says the judge will balance Collins' background. Here's a man with no prior criminal history. Here's a man who didn't plan for months to commit a crime. With the need to punish him and deter others from similarly breaking the law. What do you anticipate the judge is going to decide? I do not think the judge is going to go anywhere near the high end. The bottom line to sentencing is a sentence that's reasonable but not greater than necessary. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect a stiff sentence for Chris Collins. But you think... A year in jail, two years in jail, possible? A year and a day he would serve at the most 10 months, and that would not surprise me. But what about Collins' position as a sitting member of Congress when he committed his crimes? Prosecutors argue that should factor in. Collins helped write the laws of this country, yet acted as if the law didn't apply to him. Is there a chance that Chris Collins faces more punishment because he was a member of Congress? That's the problem with celebrity and being involved in politics because there's always this concern that you're not going to be sentenced harsh, harshly enough. On the other hand, to promote re respect for law enforcement, the judge could treat him more harshly. So it certainly isn't a get out of jail free card. We'll know for sure by this time tomorrow. The judge in this case is Vernon Broderick. He's been on the bench here in the Southern District of New York since 2013. Prior to that, he was a federal prosecutor here in New York City, and one court observer told me that has helped shape in large measure his judicial temperament and also his reputation as a fair judge, but also a tough judge. We'll be here to cover it all tomorrow. For now, reporting live outside District Court in Lower Manhattan, I'm Michael Wooten, Channel 2 News.